ran away from his master, John Sober Esquire, a Negro manservant named Cato, well known by the name of Miss Betty Cooper. This ad, published in the Massachusetts Gazette in April 1771, gives us a small window into the life of an enslaved person with two known names, Cato and the apparently more common Miss Betty Cooper. Some believe this to be evidence of Betty's gender nonconformity or identity as an early drag queen. The phrase, well known, implies that Miss Cooper was familiar to the people of Boston and needed no further introduction. Enslaved people were often limited in their self-expression. Their clothes, movement, and even names were dictated by their enslavers. Still, enslavers had little to no interest in humanizing those they enslaved, and were therefore unlikely to notice when they pushed the Western gender binary, unless to profit off this perceived novelty. Miss Cooper's enslavers may have exploited her gender expression as entertainment for white Bostonian society, hence her notoriety. We do not know the fate of Miss Betty Cooper, or how she would have identified herself, but in her expression and her escape, she resisted the powers that be, and that is well worth celebrating.